it is noteworthy that the vast majority of Freelanders run on heavy fuel. There are more than 90% of such machines on the market. The pedigree of the 2.2 turbo diesel comes from the French PSA, Peugeot Citroën, and the European branch of Ford, whose specialists developed this engine. Well, since the British brand was part of the Ford portfolio for eight years, 2000 to 2008, the DW12 diesel, 150, 160, 190 horsepower and 400 to 420 newton meters, depending on the degree of forcing, quite legally ended up under the hood of a Land Rover. In general, the successful motor in the Freelander 2 shell turned out to be unusually whimsical. Triple avoid cars 2006 to 2008. During this period, fuel injectors were often depressed, almost 30,000 rubles apiece, and with them the fuel pump, in modern money, somewhere around 75,000 rubles. In completely unpleasant situations, the timing belt was torn and, as a result, total devastation of the entire system ensued. And although sources of trouble were sometimes subject to warranty replacement even before disastrous consequences, there are still too many pitfalls hidden in early copies. By 60 to 80,000 kilometers, the nozzles of working systems that are losing their tightness are bothering. Usually, the owners solve the problem with little bloodshed, picking up cheap options from other equipment, for example, from Cam AZ. However, if the main radiator bursts, which is also not uncommon, you will have to look for a factory part, and this is at least 20,000 rubles. Since 2010, chronic diagnoses have decreased. The most common problem for a diesel engine is a breakdown of the exhaust gas recirculation system, or rather, the EGR sensor, from 16,000 rubles. The first symptoms are unstable engine operation and abundant exhaust of an unhealthy color. Further, on the rise, loss of power, misfiring and failure to start. By 100 to 120,000 kilometers, oil usually begins to ooze through the crankshaft oil seals. A rare used Freelander boasts a lean engine bay. Therefore, if you find an option with a dry, but unwashed engine compartment, consider yourself lucky. Freels with Webasto can easily throw a trick in the winter frost due to failures in the brains of the heater. And if at that moment there is a lack of depressant in the tank, the car will have to be heated. Gasoline versions have much less problems. Due to the larger circulation and long history, the statistics for the inline 6 3.2 liters with a return of 233 horsepower turned out to be the most complete. And 317 newton meters. In general, this motor was invented by Volvo engineers, who, along with Land Rover, were previously part of the Ford Empire, but under the hood of the Freelander, he met until 2012, which is six whole years. Unlike a crossover on diesel fuel, a chain operates here in the timing drive, capable of traveling up to 200,000 kilometers without stretching. The only major difficulty with the aspirator is an oil leak caused by the poor design of the crankcase ventilation system connected to the valve cover. It is for this reason that the gasoline freel sweats oil no worse than its diesel counterpart. To extend the life of the fuel pump, about 20,000 rubles, keep an eye on the fuel level. Do not lower it below one half tank, because in the heat, gasoline plays another role here the role of coolant. By the way, it's not worth dropping to the one-quarter tank mark in the case of a diesel engine, otherwise the entire system, fuel, risks getting an oxygen shock when air enters the pipe in front of the filter. However, the diagnosis is easily treated by adding fuel, and in extreme cases by pumping the fuel line. The petrol, turbo 4, 2.0 L, 240 horsepower, 340 newton meters, today has the only risk factor, turbine failure and at relatively modest mileage, around 30,000 kilometers. It's good that such machines are no more than three years old and many of them are under warranty, so dealers fix the breakdown for free. Although spare parts are usually not available, so repairs take at least a month. Transmission. Six-speed gearboxes, whether it be mechanics or automatic, will cause problems only on variants up to 2008 inclusive. On newer machines, they are noticeably more reliable and, with careful operation, do not annoy with problems. However, as well as chassis elements, the chassis runs on average up to 100,000 kilometers, and if the first owner avoided pits, then it will reach 120 to 150,000 kilometers. Of course, this does not apply to cars of the first two years of production, where intervention was required already at the turn of 60 to 70,000 kilometers, even in urban conditions, and not a small proportion of the audience loved the Freelander for its cross-country ability. Suspension. 
a promising ground clearance of 210 to 220 mm, modest overhangs, and advanced terrain response system. Despite the plug-in all-wheel drive, the second Freelander could handle serious off-road, however, only in the case of a comprehensive system health. Alas, under the influence of the environment, the body of the mechanism rusts, and the iron inside wears out. If we conduct a spectral analysis, the rear main gear, 80,000 rubles, will bearings, from 5,000 rubles, the clutch oil pump and the friction clutches themselves will be the most vulnerable, not counting the little things in the form of oil seals. And again, the worst of all things are with cars produced before 2008. The characteristic hum on them pestered already from 30 to 60,000 kilometers. Later, the resource grew to 80 to 100,000. However, the main thing is that the breakdown occurs during the warranty period. By the way, a similar alignment with power steering. Therefore, look for marks in the service book not only about the passage of routine maintenance, but also the facts of the declared warranty repair. Although, this is not a panacea, because along with serious risks, the Freelander will surely give the owner a bag of small dirty tricks. Land Rover is simply inconceivable without them. Still, it's unusually funny that Freelander considers the most reliable of them.